اور جب سب لوگ کھڑے ہوں گے تو اللہ علماء دین فرمائے گا کہ تم ایک طرف ہو جاؤ اور پھر رب کائنات ارشاد فرمائے گا کہ میں نے تمہیں اس میں اس اس لیے علم نہیں دیا تھا کہ تمہیں عذاب عذاب دوں جو میں نے تمہیں علم دیا اور تم نے مخلوق خدا تک پہنچایا جاؤ اس کے سب کے میں سب کے میں سب کو بخش دوں تو علماء دین جو ہیں جو ہیں ان کا یہ مقام ہے کہ قیامت کے دن کے دن سب سے پہلے پہلے اللہ حل بزاق کے اکرام رہی پر صلاة و السلام اس نے دلائے گا لائے گا کہ امت کی شفاعت کریں اور اس کے بعد علماء دین کو بلائے گا علماء دین امت کی شفاعت کریں گے اور پھر اللہ حل بزاق شہدہ کو بلائے گا کہ اب تم اب تم میرے محبوب کی امت کی امت کی شفاعت کریں گے تو اگر ہم چاہتے ہیں کہ اللہ حرب رزق ہم سے راضی ہو جائے اس کے محبوب صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم ہم سے راضی ہو جائے تو ہمیں علماء دین کی عزت اور رزق کرنے چاہیے ان کی خدمت کرنے چاہیے ان کی تعظیم و تعظیمت کو اترام کرنا چاہیے کیونکہ اسی میں ہی ہماری بھلائی ہے اللہ تعالی ہم سب ہو سب کو علماء دین کا اترام کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے تو آپ میں اولڈم سے تشریف لائے ہوئے اپنے مہمان مہمان حضرت علامہ مولانا مولانا ظہورہ مدوشتی صاحب کو اولا ذری نظری جو کہ فارغ التحصیل ہے جامعہ الجرم سے اور اولا ذر بن ورسکی مصر سے وہ آپ کے ساتھ تشریف لائے کے اور انگلیش میں نوجوانات کے لیے اللہ اس کے محبوب صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم کے محبت کے محبوب بکھیریں گے تو اب تشریف لاتے ہیں علامہ مولانا مولانا زہور احمد جیس کی صاحب کی صلاح زہری اللہ علیہ وآلہ Thank you. 
كثيرا كثيرا نشكره شكرا عظيما نصلي ونسلم على شمس الضحى بدر الدجا صدر الاولاد والهدى جد الحسن والحسين مولانا ومولى الثقلين ابي القاسم محمد بن عبد الله وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله اسوة حسنة صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الامي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بؤست لأتمم مكارم الأخلاق أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وأصحاب سيدنا ومولانا محمد مبارك وسلم وصل عليه الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا نور الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا شفيع المذنبين والحمد لله رب العالمين حشر تک دالیں گے ہم پیدائش مولا کی دوم مثل فارس نجد کے قلعے گراتے جائیں گے خاک ہو جائیں عدو جل کر مگر ہم تو رضا دم میں جب تک دم ہے ذکر ان کا سناتے جائیں گے Most honorable revered brothers and sisters of Iman Islam Honorable Ulama of Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu wa maghfiratuhu. Bihamdillahi al-Kareem, it is an honor and a great blessing to travel hundreds of miles away from home solely for the dhikr of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by God, indeed this is a major issue which evolves in the life of a mu'min. The love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On our way here, somebody asked a question and said, what is the reason of traveling? 256 miles, more than four hours of drive to just to deliver a talk. And it came to my mind that I requested to the brother and said that on the day of judgment, it is our iman and our aqidah and belief that Allah's Rasul alayhi salatu was salam will recognize his believers. For the reason being, the glorious Quran says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَتًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَا عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا Allah Kareem has made His beloved a witness upon all the people. And what if on the day of judgment Allah the Rasul alayhi salatu was salam recognizes you and asks you the question, well, on the 5th of January in 2014 you were called to a Milad gathering 
to utter Allah's praise and my name, what was the reason for being absent? What answer will you give? We are concerned about time today. We are concerned about miles today. We are concerned about the darkness of the night. What we should be concerned about is how we will answer in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Today's very short speech is with regards to what is the significance of the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. What was the maqsad of the birth of the Prophet ﷺ? And how are we following the footsteps in fulfilling the orders and commandments and the traditions and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? And that's what we should take away from our gatherings. Our gatherings have become a mere tradition. Our gatherings have become a mere culture. An annual event where people come, listen to the nasheeds and the nats of the Prophet ﷺ, listen to the ulama and scholars and go home. There are many significances and objectives of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's why we've come here today to learn something. Because Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu once said, O oh people, when a person sits and tries to attain the understanding of one mas'ala of deen, when a person sits and tries to understand the understanding of one doctrine of Islam, if a person understands a very small mas'ala, he will be rewarded more than that person who stands by night and establishes 1,000 nawafil in the court of Allah. Allah. So we need to understand what is Milad Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and its significance today. Those who have an understanding of syntax and etymology of Ilm al-Saraf wa al will understand that Milad comes under the title of Mudaf and an nabi Mudaf Ilayh which means the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. And usually on our calendars and our posters we say, Jashne Ide Milad Nabi. Eid means from the word of Ada Yawudu to return. Jashn, when we are celebrating the happiness of the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. And we are celebrating the birth of the Prophet ﷺ and we are thanking Allah Kareem whilst being restricted within the requirements of the Sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the glorious Quran لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Within the life of the Prophet ﷺ you have a great example to emulate. The emulation and following of the life of the Prophet ﷺ will lead you to success and salvation and triumphancy. Because the Prophet ﷺ came and for the first 40 years acted upon the glorious Qur'an before the people. How did he act upon the glorious Qur'an when the Qur'an was revealed at the age of 40? <coughs> Ask Abu Jahl, Ahlis bin Sharaid asks him. He says to him one day, Abu Jahl, tell me, do you think Muhammad is truthful? And Abu Jahl says, why, why shouldn't he be? He has never lied to us in 40 years. He is a Sadiq. He is the most honest al Amin. He is the one who reconciles between people. He is the one who has put love within people that people trust him for who he is. And if he has not lied for 40 years, then how can he lie about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When Surah Qasr was revealed, as you know, great poets would write their poetry and hang it on the walls of the Kaaba. And they would applaud and praise their great poets. But when other people said that when the Quran was revealed, Muhammad alayhi salatu was written it himself, but Surah Kausar being revealed, the three verses then hang upon the walls of the Kaaba. And when they would read the poetry 
from their poets and read the verses of Surah Kawsar, they have to say, Mahaza Kalal al Bashar. This is not the word of any human. This is indeed the word of the Creator. Allah Hazrat Azim al Barqur. Hazrat Ibrahim Nidhi Allah Ta'ala Anu says, Tere aage hi yu dabe nache. Fosaha Adam ke bade bade. Koi jane ke mu me zaba nahi. Nahi bal ke jisam me jaan nahi. When they stand in front of the Kaaba, they are as if though great poets and great men of eloquence and great men of coherence and great men of praise but when they come before the Prophet والسلام, some say they haven't got tongues in their mouths but it is as if though the angel of death has extracted their souls from their bodies. This is how they stand before the Prophet Ask Tufair ibn Amr Dawsi what happened to him who was the great leader of the tribe of Dawus and when he came to Abu Jahl, Abu Jahl said to him, listen, you're a great man of your tribe. But when you go into the masjid of the Prophet وسلم, when you enter the haram, put some cotton buds in your ears. So that when Muhammad والسلام, speaks, nothing gets into your ears. Don't think, look into his face. Because if you do, Nauzubillah bin Zalik, he will play a magic spell upon you. And you will become one of his followers. So he says, I took quite a bit of cotton bud. I put it in my ears. And I walked into the masjid of Haram in Makkah al -Makarra. He says, when I went there, and people knew that he was a great man of poetry, a great man of coherence and eloquence. His Arabic language was from those people who were the elite. When he says, I entered the Kaaba, where the Prophet والسلام, was making tawaf of the glorious Kaaba and then sat down and recited the words of the glorious Qur'an. He says, accidentally, I heard the words of the glorious Qur'an. And when those words of the glorious Qur'an touched my eardrums, I didn't listen to what Abu Jal said to me. I didn't listen to what Adban Shaiba said to me. I just went to the Prophet of Allah, the beloved of Allah, and said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna ka Rasulullah. It is the character of the Prophet ﷺ what we need to emulate, what we need to take upon. Just a few glimpses in the next few minutes. There was a man at the age of about 18 years old. He came to the Prophet ﷺ and he says, Oh Muhammad, I want to accept Islam, but I have one condition. And that condition is, that I want to accept Islam and also you give me the permission to make zina and fornicate. I want to commit adultery and be a Muslim as well. The Prophet وسلم, stayed quiet. And the Prophet listened to what he had to say. In that gathering was sitting Muzayyir al Mimbari wal Mihrab al Mawafiqi Ra'yuhu bil Wahri wal Kitab. Sayyidina Umar Abdul Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says, Oh Allah Rasul, give me the permission so I can behead this disrespect from person. Allah Rasul says to him, alayhi salatu wasalam, O Umar, only a person of patience is bestowed the maqam of nabuwa. Sit down, listen to what he has to say. So he puts this condition forth. And he says that I want to accept Islam and I want to carry on committing fornication, adultery and zina. The Prophet ﷺ says to him, come close to me. He comes close to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet of Allah asks him, do you know how abhorrent, how much of a vile sin this is within the Sharia? That after reciting the declaration of faith, after accepting Allah Kareem as your Lord and believing in the prophecy of Rasulullah ﷺ, how would you feel it? If somebody performed this action with your mother, he says, No, O Muhammad, how can this be? I would kill him. What would happen if somebody performed this action with your sister or daughter? He says, No, o Muhammad, I would take his eyes out. I would behead him upon every single question. And his answer was, Kareem Ali Salatu Wasalam said, This is how much zaira and sense of honor my ummatis have with regards to their women. So it's better if you don't ask this question. But when he left, and went to his own tribe. People questioned him. Where have you come from? How have you come? What happened? And he says, Ya ayyuhal nas, jittu min indi khairin nas. I have come from the greatest of men, Muhammad 
ابن السلام عبد الله عبد الله الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر which Imam Nawi Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali mentions in his Riyad Salihim who was sitting upon a grave and her son had died and he had been buried and the soil was still wet and she was weeping and crying and she was saying some words out of her mouth and the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam walked past her and said you should be patient patience, true patience is that in the in, in the sabru in the sadlat in ula True patience is at the time when you have been hit with great calamity and disturbance. Without lifting her head, she says words of rudeness. How do you know how much pain I am in? How do you know what I'm going through? The fruit of my heart has died and been buried. But she did not recognize the voice of the Prophet ﷺ. Mustafa Karim walked past her and entered the Masjid and Nabawi al Sharif. When she lifted her head, somebody said to her, do you, do you know who that was? Who, who you were rude to? Do you know who you said the word of insolence to? She said, no. They said, that was the, the Prophet of Allah. She started to shiver. She started to tremor. She got up and she ran all the way to the court of the Prophet She says, may my mother and father be sacrificed upon the Prophet There was no guard on the, on the, on the masjid of Rasulullah Nobody stopped me. Nobody asked me what my name was. Nobody questioned me. I went straight into the barikah of Rasulullah and sat before him. And as I was about to give him salam, he alayhi salatu wasalam said, Inna masabru in the sadmat al True patience is at the time when a person is faced by a real hardship. Did not scold her in any way. Why did you answer me like this? Why were you rude to me? Why were you saying these such words to me? Mustafa Karim alayhi salatu wasalam's life is a life in which the youth and the elderly can take lessons of kindness. Lessons of affection. What about that Bedouin who came and who had hunted an iguana, a lizard type animal, and had him hidden in his sleeve? And he comes to the Prophet and he is pushing and shoving people and he is trying to get through to the crowd. And the great scholar. The great Mufassir of the Quran, who the dunya knows as Justice Sheikh Muhammad Karam Shah Rahmatullah writes that he had that iguana and that animal in that lizard in his sleeve, so he wanted to go home and he wanted to cook it. He wanted to eat it. But as he was going home, he came past the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he pushed through the two people. And he came to the Prophet والسلام, and he listened and he asked the people, why are you sitting here? And they said, we are sitting around a man who claims prophecy. We are sitting around a man whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the great crown of leadership of the whole universe. He comes to the Prophet وسلم, and he says, Ya Muhammad, he was a Bedouin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, I will not believe in you until then puts his arm in his sleeve. As you see, the Arabs, even in Syria today, in Egypt today, in Yemen today, have clothes with really huge sleeves. He pulled out the lizard and he threw it in front of the Prophet. And he says, Oh Muhammad, I will not believe in Islam until this lizard does not believe in you. The Sahaba Ikram, the Ta'ala, and him are astounded. But what kind of condition has he put before the Prophet ﷺ? That the lizard bring Iman upon the Prophet ﷺ? And the Prophet ﷺ asks the lizard, Ya Babu. And the lizard speaks, Labbayka wa sa'adayka Ya Rasulullah. Abu Bakr is sitting. Sayyidina Umar is sitting. Sayyidina Usman and Sayyidina Ali Ridwan Allah Ta'ala Alayhi Majma'een are sitting in that gathering. فَتَكَلَّمَ الدَّبُّ بِلِسَانِ الْعَرَبِيِّ الْمُبِينِ It speaks 
in the eloquence, classical Arabic language. Mustafa Kareem asked the lizard, the Sahaba Ikram are amazed. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Man ta'budu ya dabbu. Oh lizard, who do you worship? And the lizard answers in the Arabic language. It says, I worship that Allah Kareem, who is the creator of the whole universe, whose arsh is in the sky and whose kingdomship is within the oceans, whose control is all over the universe. The Mustafa Kareem Ali Salatu Wasalam says to the lizard, Ya Dabbu, Man Ana, who am I? And that Bedouin is still watching that the lizard is speaking in the Arabic language to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the lizard speaks and says that you are the Habib of Allah. <laughs> of the Prophet and he, he says that I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the creator of the universe and you are the beloved of Allah. But it doesn't just end there. He picks his lizard up and he goes back home. And when he goes to his people, they were ready in their armor and on their horses and camels to come all the way to Medina to Manubara. And their intention was to attack the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to annihilate the land of Medina to Manubara. And he says to them, stop, stop, what are you doing? And they say, this is what our intention is. We have heard that there is someone who has claimed prophecy in the, in the people of the Quraysh, in the tribe of Banu, Banu Hashim, in the tribe of Banu Muttalib. And we're going to annihilate him, annihilate his men, wipe his name off the face of the earth. And he says, listen, listen, listen. I have just come from that man. And he says the same words. He says, Jittumil in the khair nas. I have come from the best of all men, Muhammad, the beloved of Allah. So what do they all do? They all turn around and they all come to Masjid al nabi al-Sharif. And ulama mentioned from Imam Bukhari to Imam Muslim radiallahu ta'ala anhuma that these people were in thousands and this was one of the largest and greatest number of people who came and accepted Islam all together in the court of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Someone is kissing the feet of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. Other is kissing the shoulders of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Other is kissing the hands of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. And each and every one is singing with a melodious voice. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu annaka Muhammad rasulullah. It's his kindness. His leniency, alayhi salatu wasalam. It is his love for which the Quran mentions. Laqad ja'akum rasulum min anfusikum. Azizun alayhi ma alitum. Harisun alaykum bil mu'mineen raufur raheem. That Allah's Rasul, alayhi salatu wasalam, is concerned about the welfare and the good being of the believers. And amongst the bil mu'mineen raufur raheem, his nisbah and relationship with the mu'mineen is of that of mercifulness, is of kindness. What is milad? Why do we celebrate it? There's so many questions. Milad al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is expression of happiness. Subhanallah. And somebody asked, what is Milad? Milad al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is expression of happiness. An expression of happiness within the Sharia is mustahab, is preferable. Milad al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not from the Faraid. Milad al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not from the Wajibat or the Sunnah. It is a preferable act. It is an act which is most accepted in the court of Allah. Why is that? As the great Imam, most honorable 